What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and it's been a grind this morning. I'm still out here in the PJs, the Dragon Ball Z PJs, but we've been grinding out the rankings. We just got done with the August 22nd update. I got my top 250 in Superflex and 1QB available, so I wanted to go out there and look at the, the old rankings from August 1st and the new rankings I just came out with, and I wanted to let you guys know the five guys that are skyrocketing up my ranks in august now just putting it out there i update my rankings weekly so if you want to go out there and dominate your league win a championship go check out my rankings on patreon.com slash ron stewart it'll be in the description down below in the comments let's get straight into this video let's not waste any time make sure you go down below subscribe leave a like let's go now you guys know my love four wide receivers and going wide receiver early but one of the running backs outside of the big three or four that I want to make sure that I have some exposure to this year is Aaron Jones I, I moved him up 15 spots since August 1st now some of that is with the Aaron Rodgers stuff but a lot of that is is that I've been getting burnt by Aaron Jones every year I'm just a little bit too low on him just a little bit too low because it's like okay he's not gonna get the workload but I'm starting to buy into the idea that I just want to chase talented players so I moved him from RB 13 all the way up to RB5. And I think he's legitimately a top five to seven talent at running back. And I think that that's even being conservative. I mean, we're talking about a running back that's been top four in points per game the last two years. He's hyper efficient and he might not get that bell cow workload that we all want. Like we want that guy who's just gonna go out there, get all the touches. We want all the touches, all the carries, all the receptions, all that. But I think with Aaron Jones, a 60% target share is fine because he gets the important touches. We want to see a guy get the passing down work, and we want to see a guy get the goal line work. And that's what he does. He was fifth in target share last year, and he was eighth in weighted opportunities, which properly values how valuable a target is in an overall player's volume. And he's also been top seven in touchdowns the last two years. This is still a great offense. He's very good at the goal line. He's very good at scoring touchdowns. So we have a guy that is good in the receiving game. He's good with the touchdowns. And Aaron Jones gives us that on such a low opportunity share. But I also think that we're kind of just highlighting his floor. His floor is that he's a good player. He gets the valuable touches. I think his kind of his his ceiling, you know, his path to RB1 upside, I think that he has it because that literal usage is good enough for a top five RB season. And I love AJ Dillon, but I think that he's just going to absorb Jamal Williams carries. And I think that most of Jamal Williams targets, he left behind 35 targets and that was only in like 13, 14 games. So probably more like 45, 50, maybe, maybe more like 40, 45. But I imagine Aaron Jones gets most of those targets. AJ Dillon's a, like a big workhorse back. He's not very good in the receiving game. Aaron Jones could literally have a Kamara type season last year because we've seen Aaron Jones lead the league in touchdowns before. He could give us that six touchdown game on Christmas like Alvin Kamara did. If you give Aaron Jones, so if Aaron Jones gets lucky on the efficiency side from touchdowns, and then you also get from the other side that he gets the targets from Jamal Williams, he could have a 90 plus target season. He could get that touchdown efficiency. And then we're looking at a legendary type season from Aaron Jones. Now talking about a guy that could have a monster season, I wanted to highlight Chase Claypool. I didn't move him up anywhere crazy. I've only moved him up six spots. So about half a round and he went from wide receiver 26 to wide receiver 24. But this is a guy that I keep moving up my ranks. I want to have exposure to Chase Claypool. I want to be higher on him than consensus. I want to end up with him in a lot of drafts. And this is now the wide receiver one for me in terms of fantasy rankings in Pittsburgh, in Dynasty and Redraft. Chase Claypool is my wide receiver one for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, I'm not saying that he's going to out-target Deontay Johnson, but it just in terms of upside and what he brings to the table as an alpha type wide receiver, I want exposure to that. He has that DK Metcalf type upside. And just my core values of fantasy is that I want to chase that. Here's their year one stats, Metcalf and Claypool side by side, shown by at Dynasty I am a great follow on Twitter. Metcalf had 100 targets, Claypool had 109. Claypool had 11 touchdowns, the Metcalf seven. He, they matched about receiving yards per game and Claypool outscored him in PPR. And the crazy part is, is that DK Metcalf did that on an 87.2% snap share while Chase Claypool was only out there on snaps 62.5% of the time. So he put up crazy numbers despite being on the field for like 25% less than DK Metcalf was as a rookie. If you just look at what Claypool did on a like per snap basis, he was insane. He had the highest target per route run. So he's commanding targets per route of any of the rookie wide receivers over CeeDee Lamb, over Justin Jefferson, all those guys. On a per route basis, Claypool was the most efficient at earning a target. I expect that snap share to go up. I think they're gonna they're gonna run three wide receiver sets. He'll get out there more. I think that he might even play more in two wide receiver sets over Juju Smith Schuster. I just think that Claypool has that crazy upside that we want to chase. And we know these rookie wide receivers take a huge jump in year two. And I want to bet on Claypool because Claypool could just be one of the guys that you needed to have this year. Next on this list, we have a guy that I've been warming up to a little bit. I'm not a fan of running backs in this range, but 
Darrell Henderson's a guy that I'm starting to get interested in. I've moved him up 15 spots now, so uh, around in a little bit. He was my RB21. Now he's my RB18. And I think that he's starting to become one of these running backs. I don't love the dead zone. Rounds three through six, I've talked about it a million times. I don't like the dead zone. We're not trying to draft Mike Davis or Miles Gaskin, but I think that Darrell Henderson is one of the guys that I, I'm down to take a detour for in the RB dead zone because we don't want to draft for a situation but one, his situation is great. And two, I don't think Darrell Henderson's that bad of a player. If Akers was a late first in this exact situation, we're getting a huge discount on Darrell Henderson going in like the fourth, fifth round. He should probably be, I've seen the case on Twitter that he should be a, a late round two, early round three guy. And I don't agree with that, but I'm surprised that the fantasy community isn't there yet because I know a lot of people, I know a lot of the, like the consensus in fantasy likes these kinds of running backs, you know, great situation. Nobody's in the backfield behind him to, to challenge him. Like I'm surprised that he isn't, a late third at this point. Darrell Henderson, the player, is not that bad. He was actually pretty decent last year. Uh, Curtis Patrick has a great tweet I'm going to put on the screen now, but he said that Darrell Henderson beat Cam Akers last year in yards per carry, rush attempts per broken tackle, rushing fantasy points over expectation, yards per reception, yak per reception, and PPR per opportunity. Now, not all of these stats are super predictive, but it just shows that in the same exact situation, Darrell Henderson was putting up similar or better numbers than Cam Akers in that exact scenario. Now, I do think that Cam Akers is the better player, but when we're talking about running backs and like running back talent discrepancy isn't huge when we're talking about when we're talking about running backs not of the caliber of a Saquon, McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, all that. Darrell Henderson and Cam Akers for fantasy purposes, I don't think are super, super far off in a vacuum. So I, I just want to say, I think that Darrell Henderson's a capable running back. He was also a yards created darling coming out of school. I know we're a couple years removed from his prospect profile, but it is interesting to highlight he has a second highest yards created score ever recorded behind joe mixon ahead of saquon barkley it, he is a is a yards created darling one of the best metrics we have for rookie running backs coming out he also ran for 1900 yards as a lead back on a memphis team with tony pollard antonio gibson kenny gainwell he also averaged like nine maybe like 8.9 yards per carry he was crazy that year so i think that daryl henderson has some juice i think he's better than just like a replacement level running back i don't think that he is like a mike davis type dead zone running back i think that he's actually pretty good so i'm actually excited to see what he can do on a great offense with matthew stafford this should be a top five to ten scoring offense so i think that he has that rb1 type upside we're looking for in the middle rounds which then brings us to will fuller and this wasn't a crazy move i moved him from wide receiver 37 to wide receiver 36 but i moved him eight spots so a little bit more than half a round and this wasn't anything crazy, but I moved him from this tier where I have, I have the tiers in the rankings where it's Devonta Smith and Antonio Brown. And you have like that wide receiver tier. I moved him up to like the Judy, Chanel, Gallup, Sutton area with like Tyler Boyd, you know, just one tier up. And it's because I think that, I think as a community, we're too low on Will Fuller right now. Will Fuller is a real life good wide receiver. He was first in yards per target last year. He's hyper efficient. And I think his speed takes the top off defenses, which is perfect for two. I know that Will Fuller, the crazy part is he's not just a deep threat. He's not just a one dimensional deep threat. He can play that alpha wide receiver role. I'm not that scared of Devontae Parker. I think Jalen Waddle, he's a rookie at this point. I'm not sure he's going to command the target share that would really kill Fuller's value. I think that they'll honestly complement each other. Will Fuller right now, I think that you guys might hate this comparison, but I do think that Will Fuller has a very similar game to a young Jerry Judy at Alabama. He has that, you know, he's a deep threat guy. He can do a couple, some things across the middle. Is he anywhere near the route runner that Judy is? No, but he has a similar type archetype. His route tree and the way you can use him in the formation is very similar to what we saw with Jerry Judy at Alabama. Will Fuller was the wide receiver seven last year. He's now going for wide receiver 40 prices. And even if you think that Deshaun Watson was a big reason for that wide receiver seven finish, we're still getting a massive discount because even if you want to, even if you want to say that Deshaun did a lot of that, you could still say Will Fuller, probably would have been like a, a fringe top 24 guy we're still getting for wide receiver 40 prices so i think we're getting a huge discount i think wolf fuller is a guy that is a threat to finish top 24 and as we just talked in my last video about consistency we want those boom weeks will fuller you're gonna put him in your in your flex spot maybe your flex two and he might just go off and win you a couple weeks which is huge so the last one we have here is going to be ryan fitzpatrick i moved him up 22 spots for so like two rounds in one qb leagues he was my qb 29 now he's my QB 23, and I've kind of come full circle on Fitz. And I want to apologize to Bloody Sunday, Gavin FF on Twitter, a good friend of mine. And I've been, I've been kind of giving Fitz a tough time this offseason. I'm kind of coming full circle, and I have tweeted that I don't trust Fitz because, you know, his entire career, except for the last few, he's been bad. He literally was his first like 14 years. He was actually he was just bad at football. He was a journeyman. He wasn't very good. And my concern was that he'd be washed. You know, he'd probably be benched. 
he's old like I, you know old players fall off and i'm kind of coming around to the idea that the last two years fitz has been really good this is a picture from gavin's article where he shows you know he's had kind of a career resurgence here he, when you compare his last two years to his first 14 he's better across all categories he, he set a career high in qbr the last two years he's looked good and i'm kind of open to this idea that you know some quarterbacks can just age like fine wine you had aaron Rodgers just have a career year have an mvp season we've seen kurt warner be great late in his career we've seen tom brady you know obviously fitz isn't that the same caliber of quarterback but i think that quarterbacks the one position where it's such a strong mental game when you're breaking down defenses and you're deciding okay when is it time to be ballsy and aggressive and when is it not time to be as you know just careless with the football as ryan fitzpatrick is and i think that he's kind of coming to a spot in his career where he's mentally very sharp he understands when when it's time to take risk late in games he understands when it's time to be a game manager and he's starting to actually see defenses it kind of sucks that he's finally kind of hit his stride with the mental part of the game this late in his career because he doesn't have the same physical tools but i think that he's in a spot where he can be a serviceable quarterback in fantasy he's going to be aggressive when he needs to be he's going to have plenty of rushing upside and this isn't a guy that we want obviously he's my qb 23 this isn't a guy that we want to be our quarterback for the full season but i think that fits i'm really starting to warm up to the idea that fits can be a guy that you pair with justin fields or trey lance in your one quarterback leagues especially because I was originally off of Ryan Fitzpatrick because I thought that there was a lot of downside. There is still this downside that Fitzpatrick could get benched at some point in the season. But if you're if you're starting Ryan Fitzpatrick in week 11, week 12, you're probably in trouble. You want to have Ryan Fitzpatrick as a guy that you start the first four, five, six, seven, eight weeks. And eventually you get to bring in a Justin Field. You get to find like a Justin Herbert or Jalen Hurts off streams. And then you find a guy to come play for you in that spot. But I think Fitzpatrick is a very good bridge to Konami code QB type quarterback in fantasy now that's going to do it for today let me know if you guys want to hear my followers i could go back through my rankings and tell you guys the top five guys that have been following in my rankings but that's going to do it for today if you want to dominate your home league draft again make sure you go check out my rankings patreon.com slash ron stewart i'll put it in the comments i'll put it in the description we're going to be going crazy from now until week one so make sure you guys are subscribed i'm excited to put out all this content man i got some really cool stuff ahead for you guys i think you guys are going to love it as always I'll see you guys in the next one.